The Human Development Index, or HDI, measures health, education, and the standard of living of a nation. But how exactly do geographers measure that standard of living? It all comes down to a country's wealth and how that wealth is created. The economic factor used in the HDI is the gross national income, or the GNI, per capita. Gross national income is the total income earned by a nation's residents and businesses, including income earned abroad. Think of it as the total money flowing into the nation. The per capita part simply means the GNI is divided by the total population, giving us an average income per person. But that number alone can be misleading. $1,000 in Nairobi might not buy you the same amount of items in Tokyo. That's where the purchasing power parity comes in, or the PPP. Now, this is an adjustment made to the GNI to reflect the relative cost of goods in different countries. It essentially asks how much would it cost to buy the exact same basket of goods in different places. By using the GNI, PPP, per capita, we get a much fairer comparison of the actual standard of living between countries. We often talk about the gross domestic product, or the GDP, which is simply the total value of goods and services produced within a country's borders. GNI is a slightly broader term because it includes that income earned abroad. The GDP is all within the nation. To understand a country's wealth, we look at where its people work. Economists divide jobs into three economic sectors. The primary sector involves the jobs that involve direct extraction of raw materials from the earth. Think agriculture or farming, mining, fishing, and forestry. In developing countries like Nigeria or Vietnam, a large percentage of the workforce is often in this sector. The secondary sector processes raw materials into finished, usable goods. This is the manufacturing and construction sector. Examples include building cars, making textiles, or assembling electronics. As countries industrialize, this sector grows rapidly. The tertiary sector, or the third one, is the sector that provides services to people and businesses. This is the service industry and includes everything from teachers, doctors, lawyers, retail clerks, and transportation drivers. In most developed countries like the United States or Germany, the vast majority of people work in this sector. Now, a key difference between developed and developing nations is productivity. Productivity is a measure of the output of goods and services for every hour worked. Developed nations are highly productive because they have access to advanced technology and machinery. A farmer in the United States using a giant tractor is far more productive than a farmer in a developing nation that is using basic hand tools. This leads to a higher value added per capita. Value added is the gross value of a product minus the costs of the raw material and services used to make it. When an employee can produce more finished product in less time, the value added per person skyrockets, boosting the country's overall GNI. Finally, how does this translate into your daily life? Well, it does through the items you buy, the consumer goods. Consumer goods are products like cars, phones, computers, and appliances purchased for individual or household use. A high standard of living means people have the income to purchase and access these items. The number of non-essential consumer goods per capita, like the number of cars or internet connected devices per person, is a great indicator of a nation's development level. In developed countries, consumer goods are abundant and widely accessible. In developing countries, these goods are often scarce or available only to the wealthier urban elite, highlighting the vast difference in the standard of living from country to country. So the GNI, the economic sectors, and access to consumer goods all work together to paint a clear picture of a nation's standard of living. The final crucial factor is determining its overall HDI score.